Aloha. And mohalo for being here. Welcome to another video. I got pretty tan. You got freckles. Here, my tan line. If it will show up on camera. <laughs> She tried real hard. I tried real hard. <laughs>
kind of, it wasn't like a field, but like a, just a grassy tree area between us and the nearest neighbors. Easy to walk to the restaurant and just, just the beach access was just right there, just a short walk. And it was pretty good. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really lovely. And Lahaina itself has a lot of history, over a thousand years of Polynesian history. And it actually served as the capital of the Hawaiian kingdom from 1820 to 1845. It's one of the oldest parts of the island. And so because of it, there's a lot of historical pieces and elements. And that made the Royal Lahaina one of the oldest resorts. It was really nice to stay there because it's so well kept, but it also feels really homey. And all of the staff there were just so kind. Um, it, you, it gave you more of a local taste. Like you didn't feel like you were like doing the whole resort touristy feeling. Everything there was so good. Like food wise was really delicious. And the people were really informative and helpful. Like anytime we had any questions, they were great. So another cool part that, about that resort is that they have the longest running luau. So we got to go to our first luau. Yeah, the rehearsal dinner, the traditional rehearsal dinner. This was not traditional at all. We just went to a luau and had dinner and got to learn about the history of Lahaina and um, just Maui in general. And it was pretty cool. Pretty cool to learn some things and we got to see some cool dancing and, you know, it's, it's part of their whole way of life. Music, song, and dance. So we spent the first day mostly on the beach. Um, the very first couple of minutes we were on the beach, a sea turtle just casually swam by swam by but it was also kind of funny because they were elusive like i felt like everybody we talked to was seeing sea turtles like on the regular <laughs> snorkeling with them they were everywhere and we got to see them like right away the one and then it was like silence for most of the trip after that Wildlife of all kinds are considered sacred to Maui. Yeah. And you get that feeling when you're there and watching how people take care of stray cats, dogs. So hello, kitty. You're gonna go into YouTube. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> Such a sweet kitty. Such a sweet pig. Living that island life. <laughs> He's like, I'm doing all the things you need me to do, right? I'm gonna see all the stuff. Hello! Aloha! Did you kiss? <laughs> Chickens. Um, it's chickens. It's chickens are the main predator on the island. Which is so cool. They are the main predator. So they have centipedes and scorpions, which are actually, you're really not going to run into them unless you're in the heart of the jungle, like going off major trails, because the chickens have kept the population so low. And these chickens are like really beautiful in color. They just look kind of like tropical yeah. chickens. Yeah, pretty cool. They nest in trees. Lahaina is the resort area. It's where most people go to stay. Um, Lahaina in its name means like bright, enduring sunshine. 
uh, because it hardly ever rains there, where you've got the other side of the island, uh, the southern side of the island that is mostly um, rainforest and rain, you've got this beautiful stretch of just beach and it's sunny. And yeah. so you could walk along the beach and literally have the reef like right there. Like you could walk out no more than 10 feet into the ocean and there was just rock reef. Um, which made snorkeling really convenient because neither one of us, I had never snorkeled before. I had a long time ago, but not like this. This is different. But it was fun. You just, I mean, literally just go out there and put your goggles on and just stick your face in the water and there it is, right there. I've Crystal clear water, lots of different bright colored fish swimming around, just feeding off the reef and it was amazing couldn't believe like it was like I kind of wanted to cry in that moment with my face in the water because first of all I'm not a really great swimmer and second I've always been afraid of open water of any kind but these fish are so beautiful and they're fearless they just it's crazy like I felt like we were swimming in an aquarium yeah basically we did a sunset whale watch tour it's not quite wheel season yet. And they fed us dinner, which was so lovely. And lots of Mai Tais. And lots of Mai Tais. <laughs> The boat was also probably the most positive experience that I had regarding having my smart dolls with me. Um, I wouldn't say that I had a negative experience by any means, but, but also it was a good challenge for me to have to be uncomfortable uh, in a way that I hadn't been before and to try to push myself. So when we were on the boat, I the captain of the boat was so sweet, he was letting a, a boy drive the boat and I was like I'm gonna go ask him if I can drive the boat or see if Tenna because I brought um both of my semi-real fortitudes well I guess I have three um I brought my my tea and my cocoa semi-real fortitudes with me and I had Tenna with me and I was like I'm gonna go ask if I can drive the boat and they had a photographer on the boat that they hired and so I went over and talked to her and the the captain and I asked if it was okay if I took some photos with my doll and they thought that that was the most fun thing like they were so sweet um so I got to drive the boat which was fun because I was able to tell naturally like I'd be like okay we need to take a right turn here not only that but she got to get on a loudspeaker <laughs> and page me <laughs> Can't we page him because he couldn't Cause hear us? I was us. still at the front of the boat. She just disappeared to the back. He was rocking out to music and drinking Mai Tais and we were trying to yell for him and he was like, I mean, it's loud. You're on a boat. So I got to go on the loudspeaker and it's fan. <laughs> yeah. There's so much to do. Like there's the tourist list of things, but then there's like the off the beat track things. And that, I think, spoke to us the most. Renting a vehicle, which pretty much everybody does, that's your way of getting around. Ben did a really wonderful job navigating. Those are not easy roads to drive. <laughs> kind of windy in some places. Yeah. It's just driving. Because you could stop literally everywhere. Like, there was just places to stop and walk. We went down to several cliffs. Just standing on a cliff. Try not to panic.
and these shoes. We go hard on earth. Which my parents about barfed when they saw how how like you know accents happen. We saw on the weekend that we were there. I think we ended up seeing like three different ambulances yeah. on three different cliff areas. That's just it. Like they don't. This is not Disney World. You don't you don't go to be in a space that's protected. Like this is if you get too close, you're gonna risk. Falling, you know. I mean, there's signs everywhere. It's falling rocks. You know, they do the best they can to keep things tidy and keep things organized. It's, but you know, it, it's just they want to leave the natural habitat it, the way it is because that's just part of their whole entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we we learned was to be cautious of others. Be an extra safe, overly cautious driver. If you start to get comfortable, you're probably driving too fast. Drive slow because we had so many people flying, like driving way too fast. And that was very scary. So we, we had to be very defensive. defensive. We had to be very driving. defensive drivers. But we just had the windows down and watching the trees go by and the cliffs and the, the air, just the ocean air smells so good. It's really refreshing to, to see just how much respect and care goes into the land. One of the things that was really important to us was supporting small businesses while we were there, being small business owners. And thankfully, that's pretty much uh, all over the place. Yeah. They still have, I mean, they have their, you know, a few department stores like Walmart and Costco and Target and things like that. But on, on the side of the island that we're, we were in, in Lahaina, that's, for the most part, a lot of that is just mom and pop shops. Historical Lahaina is a must if you're gonna, want, if you want local shopping, if you want small, the small shop experience. We spent a couple hours there. We didn't wanna go crazy with shopping because that, that was not our intent when we were there. But Ben wanted to get a ring that had some kind of a stone. Initially, he was talking about um, turquoise, but turquoise is not the stone um, in Maui, the main stone, it's actually lava rock. And it's a beautiful light blue lava rock. So we ended up going to a store called Lahaina Gems, which is owned by Thai and Ivanka. He said Mai Thai, which I think was like to help with an association and to make a joke, but his business card says Thai, and they hand make every piece of jewelry. And it is incredible, and it is so worth it and it was worth just the visit like yeah it was cool to just talk to him as you know just person to person and then also as small business owners and just it was just an interesting chat it was pretty cool yeah learning from the locals what it was like to have to to endure a pandemic when you rely so much on tourism was really devastating. So our heart went out to a lot of people and also the road to Hana. There were so many just ghost shops. Yeah, you just, so the road to Hana is like, it's, it's a journey to a little town called Hana. A lot of history there as well, but it's, you know, the journey to get there is just this windy cliffside road. That's where we saw a lot of those one lane bridges and things like that. Um, really pretty views, really cool. It's a very popular place for people to go just because it's, it's, it's like a tourist 
attraction in itself just to drive this road. So along that road, since it's such a long and windy path, there's little shops and things that families had set up over the years and probably made a lot of their um, living uh, just on tourists driving that road. And when the pandemic came, they just, you know, there was no tourism. There was nothing to support them. So they had to find other means and they closed those shops. And they were still closed when we got there. As the doctor had mentioned to me, these are precious people. And they did everything. Having the limited resources they had health-wise and the limited number of hospital beds to keep people safe. And so we heard a lot about, you know, the, the clash between taking care of people and then taking care of business and the, like just that whole livelihood debate, but we didn't experience it necessarily directly. And we recognize that we are very fortunate and privileged in that way. So to hear about it while we were like, to hear about it so much on the trip from just about everybody we met was really, was really powerful. So I feel like we just said thank you a lot, like thanking the doctor for his commitment to taking care of his patients, thanking Ty for his commitment to his artistry and his employees and for still being so positive after everything. Like, yeah. you can't just help but like, have a, a huge uh, amount of respect, but also know that like we can't understand what it was like to go through with the experience. So it was our our turn to listen and to contribute when we could. Um, go visit Ty and Ivanka because you will not be disappointed. We walked through a rainforest, which was really cool. There were also a lot of signs about falling trees and that people had been killed there and there are unmarked graves for people killed by falling branches which had me looking up pretty much yeah. the entire time. We are currently in a jungle. Yeah, we're off this. We'll be watering it. Um, but in walking through there, we discovered that we were, that the reason that this path was basically created was that there is a popular snorkel site. It's like a cove. Yeah. And we didn't know, cause we, we literally just drove. We didn't Google a ton of stuff while we were there. Sometimes we just let the road take us wherever it led us to. So when we got there, we saw all these people snorkeling and all of these boats that were there, catamarans with, with people snorkeling, and we were like, damn. damn it. I was curious if there were Buddhist temples, and there are quite a few, but there was one specifically that was Japanese style. I dressed the girls in yukatas made by My Lady Disdain and Diana the Doll Fairy, and we went in the morning, and it was beautiful. We got some cool photos. Seeing it and being in its presence was really lovely. It's called the Lahaina Jodo Mission, and it was originally founded in 1912, and then it burned down in 1968 in an accidental fire, but was rebuilt again in 1968 in the traditional Japanese architect. So it was rebuilt in 1968 in a different location in the old Lahaina, and the bell that they have there was actually built in traditional fashion in Japan. So we made some donations, took some photos, and just admired the architecture and made me feel a little bit closer to Japan, which is my dream, like of any place in the world that I could go to. And then our last day, we drove to Hana.
just wouldn't be a rainforest without rain. <laughs> I told Ben as a kid, when I went to go to the lake with at my grandparents' lake house, I would sit on rocks and stare into the water. So every time we were near the water, I would literally stop and stare because it was exciting to see anything from. That's why there's so many photos of cat sitting on the rocks. Because that's my happy place. I just really enjoyed that feeling and it just like was meditative and it was nostalgic in that way yeah. and then just the excitement of like I was trying so hard to see a sea turtle again and it wasn't until our last day just a couple hours before we boarded our flight that um we went to a kind of a remote-ish beach McKenna Beach I think it was McKenna Beach and by divine intervention or some kind of one men turtle magic one turtle came to say hello and it was like it was swimming around the rocks trying to get something because it pretty much kept going after one spot even though the, it was like the water was rushing in on the rocks and it's, it was trying to get something right there it was a very windy day um, and the water was very choppy yeah. so that turtle was. It was fun. Oh, I was so happy. And then there was a couple that was there and they felt the same way. And so like they were giddy with me and I had climbed so far onto these rocks. Yeah, she was not gonna be stopped. <laughs> For someone that is so anxious like me, I Ben said it was really funny to see me just like climb over boulders and like there was a do not trespass area that I was just like and just a box of chocolates you never know what you might get very hit or miss very hit or miss it was certainly magical and we hope to return and for those who've never gone we hope you go we sure hope to bring family when we go next time yeah and then next week for Thanksgiving holiday, a uh, big collab with Diana, the Doll Fairy, and Lovely Day. So we look forward to seeing you then. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. And wherever, what part of the world, wherever you are watching this, we love you. Mahalo. And we will see you next time. Peace out, Bean Sprouts. Bye. It's Jackie. <laughs> I'm Baby Jack Jack. I'm Baby Dog. And I'm here. Hmm? Hmm? Oh. 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 Luna. Miss Luna. Miss Luna. She's six months old. Just a baby. Just a little baby.